welcome to this my I guess I should stop numbering them um, uh, what am I going to be doing you know 10 years from now hi welcome to, to my 1712 it's ridiculous welcome to my video blog for October uh, 7th 7th 2006 all right uh, first things first let's get the contest out of the way um, the first contest is the what game is this contest from my website and uh, Ryan Clark is the winner he correctly identified this game as uh, Magic Candle um, one of my favorite old-school RPGs by a designer named Ali Adebeck and Ali if you're out there um, make another game will you please um, he wrote uh, started by writing uh, old uh, RPGs like uh, Rings of Zilfin for SSI back on the Commodore 64 days um, did the Magic Candle series 1, 2, and 3 and then he pretty much you know gave up on game development um, which makes me sad so uh, uh, Ali if you're out there you know uh, you got a fan still you, you still got a fan all right um, the second contest had no winner nobody successfully uh, identified the quote at the end of my last video blog um, which was from Psychonauts um, I, I kind of figured the quote would be too short um, basically uh, at the end of, of pyrokinesis training Sasha 9 asks uh, Raz so what did we learn today Raz and Raz responds with fire is pretty which <laughs> which is awesome um, so nobody got that one unfortunately maybe I'll, I'll do an easier one at the end of, uh, of this one we'll see all right now that that's over with um, I guess the first thing I want to talk about this week is uh, uh, the difficulty curve of games. Um, I just finished this week uh, uh, a, a, a fantastic, stupendous, wonderful, absolutely gotta have game for the cube. If you own a cube, you must own this game. It's called Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. If you've already got a cube, the odds are good you've already got the game and you know exactly how good it is, but it is fantastic. It's hilarious for one thing. It's honestly truly funny. Um, it makes fun of itself. It makes fun of the, of the whole Mario series of games. It makes fun of the Mario universe. Um, but always does so in a very sweet and endearing manner. Uh, it's got fantastic characters in it. And uh, it, it's, just a, it's just a great game overall. But it has one failing. And that one failing, of course, is what I'm going to focus on. So, a good game. Really, really good game, guys. Really good game, Intelligent Design, except for, for one little thing. The ending will stomp you into the ground. Um, the difficulty curve of the game is such that um, it, it really feels like it was made for younger audiences, uh, far younger than me. Far younger than me. Um, but the end of the game, it's almost as if the designers had a loss of nerve. It was almost as if they, they, they said to themselves, you know, there's, there's nothing in this game that's, 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 that's really brutally hard. C can we ship a game that's, that's really easy? Can, can, we, can we do that? Will, will the guys at, at our next you know, designer retreat laugh at us? Um, uh, let's, 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 let's spruce up the ending just a little bit. Yeah, and then, and then a little bit more. And, and then a little bit more until you know the end boss you know crushes you, uh, uh, unless you <laughs> get really really lucky and and came down with a whole bunch of really good items and badges and and superpowers and, and all that. <coughs> Plus they made the mistake. There's a long unskippable cutscene right before the boss battle, and there's a long unskippable cutscene right in the middle of the boss battle. So every time I died during the end of the boss battle, of course, of course, that's when I would die, um, I would have to sit through those unskippable cutscenes again and again and again. And uh, I'm, I'm honestly amazed that I made it through it. But I, I had to see the end. I was emotionally invested at that point. I had to see the end of that game. And I was well rewarded. So um, the whole point, of course, is that the ending could have been easy, and or at least easier. And it wouldn't have detracted anything from the game. And like I said, it's almost as if intelligent design had a failure of nerve, and and, and said to themselves, "Can we can we ship a game with, with with nothing hard in it, except for one optional boss who will kick your butt?" Um. And and uh, 
they I guess they couldn't respect themselves un unless they shipped a game with a hard boss at the end. Um, and that reminded me of my uh, experience with Psychonauts. Speaking of Psychonauts, Psychonauts is not a particularly uh, difficult game either until you hit the meat circus. Everybody knows the meat circus because the meat circus will kick your freaking butt. It doesn't matter how good you are. You will just barely get through the meat circus. Um, it's controller throwing difficult in a game that hadn't been... See, that's the problem, you know? You pick up Devil May Cry 3 or Ninja Gaiden Black and you know from the beginning this game is going to brutalize you. It's part of the gaming experience and you're going to enjoy it. I mean, if they're up front with it, that's fine. And uh, but, but if you you know you're you're going along you know having fun, not having too much trouble getting through stuff, and then the game smacks you around, you you feel that something's wrong. And and I felt that something was wrong in both at the end of both Paper Mario and Psychonauts, and in both cases you know I persevered um, because I had to see the end. But in both cases it felt unnecessary. And everybody's pointed this out before, but I'm going to say it again. Half-Life 2, the last level is easy. It's one of the easiest levels in the game, but it does not feel unrewarding. Um, it's interesting. Things happen. Um, assumptions that you made throughout the entire game turn out to not be true. Um, you get a very interesting twist on your, your main weapon. And that interesting twist allows you to walk through, you know, most of the, the end of the game. And then you've got the final boss fight. Um, and it's not particularly difficult. It's very interesting. And it's very rewarding. And that's the right way to do it. <sighs> so, I guess that's the rant of the week. All right. Um, now for our second segment. Uh, I'm going to feature some gameplay from Hidden Myth. I was I was upbraided by Ryan Clark, uh, my lead programmer on Hidden Myth, and yes, the same guy who who won the contest. It, it's it's a coincidence, I swear. Um, he uh, upbraided me for showing the intro movie to Hidden Myth, but not showing any of the gameplay, um, because that's what he worked on, and and he wants to see see the the, the gameplay. So here's some gameplay from Hidden Myth with commentary by me. Enjoy. All right, hidden myth. First, we're going to start with some of that snarky humor I mentioned earlier. ADHD control to Special Agent Cadbury. Are you reading me, son? Now you secure that crap, soldier. We've tracked the first keystone to this location. We used to call it Christmas Town, but things have gotten pretty weird around here lately. Reports are the big man's gone off the deep end, ignoring labor laws, pumping out dangerous toys. Here at HQ, we call it Santa's Sweatshop. It's the Keystone. It's making Santa mental. He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He also knows how to kill you in your sleep without leaving any marks. That's a healthy fear, son. It might even keep you alive till New Year's. Kahuna, out. Okay. Now, one of the things you need to remember as you watch this is that the Gizmondo was basically a, a pocket PC. Um, but it did have a nice 3D chip in it, and uh, one of the things we could do with that was that we, we could get pretty cool shadows, as you can see here. Um, our lead programmer, Ryan Clark, also came up with a very, very interesting lighting technique that allowed us to get pretty good lighting on uh, overhead uh, objects, objects seen only from overhead, which of course is what this game was all about, uh, very cheaply by taking four images of the uh, of the object being lit from the four cardinal directions and then blending them based on which direction the light was actually coming from. Since Cadbury has a light source on him, uh, you'll see a, a fair amount of that, like on this teddy bear right here, as he approached the teddy bear it lit up. Um, the basic style of the game is just shoot everything. Uh, and the game also has a spell system. Cadbury just cast a spell called World of Hurt. He just picked up a pickup that gives him rapid fire. Um, and one thing that I like to do was to uh, stack rapid fire and lock and load to just destroy everything. Um, here's a, a, another little uh, conversation. Like 
And now for our second game mechanic, the key lock mechanic. Uh, very simple, we give you the first one, but uh, from now on all the keys that you will have to find will either be on enemies like you saw there, or you'll have to hunt them down in the world, and it can be very difficult in, in some levels. Some of the levels, uh, the designers hit the keys pretty hard. Um, you can see that uh, the different bullets uh, with this power up are different colors, and they put different colored lights in the world. Um, uh, again, the Gizmondo could, could do some pretty interesting stuff, uh, like I said before. The, uh, the the reason we got suckered in was because we had a device, and the device actually could do pretty interesting stuff. Um, all right, enough of that. We're going to see a different level now. We're going to see the level Planet X. Now be careful, soldier. Planet X ain't exactly the garden spot of the multiverse. Yeah, it was. Long time ago, for a big intergalactic keg party. I left early. No atmosphere. Hell, I guess I'm no comedian. Enough with the puns. Let's see if you got the midichlorians to find that keystone. And those absolutely terrible puns were <laughs> courtesy of our lead designer, Wynn McLaughlin. Um, and in Planet X, you're going to fight a whole bunch of purple and, and, and green aliens. Uh, which were actually voiced by me. In fact, uh, those elves on the first level were also voiced by me. Uh, I voiced just about every, you know, common enemy in this game. Um, for some reason, they uh, they they, they kind of like the, the funny voices that I made. So, uh, it's not that I like making funny voices. I hate making funny voices. I never make funny voices. Um, but they insisted that I do it for this game, and, and I was willing to... Oh, there's the minimap. I coded that. Uh, this level definitely needs a minimap because there's lots of teleportation, and the, le the level is not contiguous. Um, let's see. What else are we doing here? Uh, basically, we're just wandering around an alien planet, shooting the crap out of everything, just like you're supposed to in this game. Um, the spell system in the game was actually very interesting, uh, as I'm about to show you. Um, you cast spells by holding down a shoulder button and then inputting a uh, series of commands. And if you did it right, you would get a spell. And if you did it wrong, you would not get a spell. Instead, you get kind of a farting noise. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm in god mode, because I never was really good at this game. The game actually had an in-game spell list that would tell you all the combinations that you'd already discovered. Um, and of course, since I'm cheating like the cheat, I, I've already got them all unlocked. Um, uh, Ryan insisted that I demonstrate the uh, Apes of, of Wrath spell. It's, it's his favorite, and, and so I will here as soon as I figure out exactly what the combination is that will, that will cast that spell. Um, I Love Bees, a reference to that famous uh, website, that was, that was actually pretty awesome. And now that I know what Apes of Wrath is, I'm going to fail to cast it. And I'm going to fail to cast it again. There they are! Look at the monkeys. Look at them monkeys go. Them monkeys will kill stuff for you. That's what they're for. And uh, now I'm going to try and cast it again and fail and fail and fail because I, I suck. Uh, this was a funny one. This was super sized me. Ah, there's the apes. Uh, they're running off towards another part of the level. They weren't that smart. You'll notice how everything slows down. That's not a mistake. We did that on purpose to, uh, to, to so that people could uh, feel that uh, it, it, they weren't getting rushed too much to, to, to be able to cast spells successfully. And uh, I'm going to try and cast the apes one more time here. There they are. Ooh, I've got one left. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. Ooh, he's feisty. I just picked up rapid fire, and now I'm gonna teleport. Um, uh, again, this level this level is not contiguous, so you need the the, the, the mini map to remind you of where you are. Um, but that was hit and myth. <laughs> 